Okay, I am going to share this live video while I am at the laundromat. And hopefully it will be a blessing to you. Hopefully you can hear me okay. I'm going to share about the courts of heaven and the dangers of gossip and fornication and how something physical uh, affects our spiritual body and how something spiritual affects our spirit, our physical and spiritual, how they interact and how dangerous these things are. And uh, if you can't watch it live, I hope you share it with your, your friends who, who can watch it. So I'm going to be talking about the courts of heaven. But if you don't know anything about the courts of heaven, you'll still be blessed because I'm also going to be sharing about gossip and what that does physically to your life and fornication and why it's so important not to do those things. First of all, let me give you a definition of what gossip is. I'm going to start my car here because it's getting hot. I'm at the long on that right now. <laughs> gossip is anything spoken to someone about someone else that makes them look less in your eyes. So anything that makes someone else look less in your eyes is gossip. Okay. Now, what happens when we gossip is, uh, first of all, the very first thing I want to share with you that is really, really important is our mind and body cannot tell the difference between what's when we say something our mind and our body doesn't know if we're talking about ourselves or if we're talking about someone else science has proven this that your mind cannot differentiate between when you're saying something about someone else or you're saying something about you so when you're gossiping what you're doing is you're telling your own mind that this is you and it's going to respond like that like attracts like so the things that you're saying about the other person is really the mind thinks you're saying it about you so it's, it's gonna say oh okay and then it does it so that's the most important thing about gossip then um, in our country and in our world basically we say we're innocent until proven guilty that's really a lie because our thought process is you're guilty until proven innocent. So once you plant a seed in somebody's mind about something that makes someone else look bad, that seed is in their mind whether it's true or not. In other words, if I go up to you and I say, hey, did you see Joe over there? I think he's gay because he walks a little funny. Okay. Now, in that person's mind, they're going to be constantly looking at that person to look for what they perceive as signals that that person might be gay or whatever. That's just a big example. So, you're planting a seed in someone else's mind which will produce a harvest. Now, it doesn't matter if it's true or not. You already degraded that person's uh, view of that other person. So, not only does this gossip which is anything spoken to somebody else about someone that makes them look smaller in their eyes so not only by saying well I'm just judging a you know I'm just judging them well that's not your job to judge your job is to love so when you are saying to somebody else your opinion which is degrading someone else you are planting seeds in their mind that will produce a harvest and they'll probably go and share it with someone else so don't least even listen to gossip now the other things besides thinking in in our natural mind we are really guilty till proven innocent because once you point out a guilt or what you think is a guilt that person will believe it and look for reasons to believe it words cannot be taken back once you spoke words you can take them back legally and say that you denounce them, but you cannot stop the person who heard it from he hearing it. And words cause trauma. Okay, they open the door to trauma, offense, and they become seeds and they become fruit and they become self-fulfilling prophecy. So, number one important thing, your mind cannot differentiate between what you say if you're mm -hmm. talking about yourself or you're talking about someone else. So every time you gossip, every time you put somebody down, your mind is saying, oh, okay, we'll behave that way because you're talking about us, okay? Scientifically, they have proven this fact, and that is number one reason why not to gossip. But then you have the thought in the other person's mind that they're guilty until proven innocent. Words can't be taken back. 
and they create trauma, offense, open doors, and seeds become fruit. And after you plant that seed in that person's mind by gossiping about someone else, you're giving them a power of suggestion, okay? Now this is why we can change things in our own world by speaking words. So if you can change your own world by speaking words, then don't you think that you can change someone else's world to the negative by speaking words of judgmental criticism, gossip? Okay, and remember your perception or the lie someone else might have told you becomes reality planted in your mind or someone else's mind. So don't plant those things in someone's mind. Um, and remember, you reap what you sow. If you're gossiping about someone else, you might not call it gossip. You might say, oh, the pastor does this or oh, this person does that. And it's something that makes them look like less of a person in someone else's mind. Then you are still gossiping. That is technically gossiping and remember everything you say your mind does not differentiate between what you're saying to someone else and what you're saying or saying about someone else and what you're saying about yourself words are okay now here's two three more really important things words attract or detract demons okay words are what allow legal doors to open to attract demons to harass you and God tells us to love. He doesn't tell us to love because he says, oh, I want you to be a good person. Love everybody. If you are walking in love, you are not opening the door to demon spirits, to demon activity, to, uh, Jesus said, I am the door. Well, Jesus is the door to heaven. Jesus is the door to the Father. But your words become the door to the enemy, legal door that opens up and causes the enemy to kill, steal, destroy, cause sickness and disease, poverty, lack of fear. Everything that was under the curse, it can be brought onto you when you are doing these things. Okay, now words are vibrations. They are frequencies. Okay, frequencies is how the spirit realm works. Everything has a frequency. Uh, essential oils have frequency. Um, uh, canned food have frequency your body has frequencies parts of your body has different frequencies Scientifically proved that we all have frequencies. So our words are frequencies when we speak Frequencies in words it attracts Things so what are you attracting by you having to say oh look at Melissa over there look at her nails She just thinks she's blah 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 Okay, you just attracted a spirit to you by the frequency that was coming out of your mouth. You also told yourself those things about yourself. And then your body will bring them about. So words are frequency. They affect the spirit realm. They change the atmosphere. And you come into agreement with the enemy when you are gossiping. That's really, really important. When you are saying something, gossip again is anything spoken to somebody about someone else that makes that person look less of a person in their mm -hmm. eyes. Okay, anything, anything. So when you gossip, you're coming into agreement with the enemy. What does God say about that person? Now, it might not appear true yet, but when you speak it, you call it into being. So you should be saying, hey man, look at her. She looks gorgeous, She, you know, she's losing weight. She's trying, you know, positive. Speak what God says about them. God says everything good about them, not what they appear. That's, that's why these places that, that say negative things about transgender and gay people, um, we all know it's a sin. They know it's a sin. But some of them can't change and they're stuck. So when they come to your church or you see them in your community and you don't like the way they look or the way they dress, the way they walk, don't downgrade them. Instead, tell them, you know what? God loves you. You you are special you have a calling you have a destiny there is a purpose in your life the God wants to live inside of you okay so you speak the frequency of God you come into agreement with what God says about them not what the devil says about them because like I said whatever you come into agreement with you have and the last thing is you will have to appear in the courts of heaven to answer for your gossip the accuser will accuse you of this and have a case against you. You know, the courts of heaven is an interesting thing and sometimes it seems complicated, but you reap what you sow basically. 
and sometimes you reap what your ancestors sowed because it keeps coming down. So you want to shut the doors. And as far as courts of heaven goes, it's like an onion. You have to peel off layer by layer by layer. It doesn't always happen overnight. You just got to keep at it, keep going at it, keep working at it, keep going to the courts of heaven, keep repenting for the things of, uh, that God brings to your heart. And um, that's it on uh, gossip. Now we're going to talk about fornication. Okay. Fornication, Mark 10, 8, and the two shall become one flesh, so they are no longer one, two, but one flesh. When you have sex with somebody, whether it's rape, uh, fornication, adultery, or your own spouse, you are becoming one, okay? When you become one, okay, in 1 Corinthians 6, 6, 16 it says or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her in other words whoever you have sex with you are one body for the two he says shall become one flesh but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him flee sexual immorality for, for every sin that does a man does is outside of his body but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit wow that is really loaded so the two shall become one. Now, when you become one, you share everything in common. Uh, just like when you're married, you share everything in common. What's his is mine. You take on the same name. It's a covenant, okay? You become two. Every demon that is attached to that person becomes your demon. Every harassment, every trauma, every negative thing and positive thing on that person becomes attached to you. Did you ever notice for those... I have friends that have marriages that the other person isn't saved and they have a terrible relationship because they're not equally yoked but every time they have sex that transfers back and forth the negative spirits of the unsaved person and if they don't realize it and come against that after sex and rebuking send back send those spirits away then they begin to turn and behave and have anger and resentment issues toward that person and they have no clue why and it's because when they have sex they become one and all those spirits attached to them try to attach to you okay so that is one important thing just think of all the people you had sex with before you got married or before you got saved they still have a say so in your life because the spirits and trauma and issues that they carry are now issues that are, are trying to attach to you and if you aren't aware of it um, then you're going to get caught up, pulled back, trapped, and, and kill, be killed, stilled, and destroyed by the enemy. Okay, two become ones. Do you know that when you have sex with someone, you're exchanging seed? You're exchanging your DNA, okay? Whether you actually went through everything, I mean, just having that intercourse, you're exchanging seed, okay? And you can think of this way. The DNA is in the blood. If you have sex during the menstrual cycle, the DNA is in the blood. Maybe you're exchanging DNA. Maybe that's why God said not to have uh, sex when you're old covenant stuff. I don't know. That's just a thought I'm throwing out there for you to think about. But you are exchanging seed when you have intercourse. Everything in that person's life up to that point becomes an issue with you. Every drama, every spirit is now yours. Okay. So, just think of it this way. So, every, let's say you're not married or before you got married, you had sex with one person. Okay. That one person's everything became yours. Now, that one person, before they had sex with you, had sex with one other person. And that one person had sex with three persons who had sex with five persons and so on and so on and so on. So, everybody, it, it, it's like, it's like seed sown. So, you not only are one with the one person, let's say Joe and Tina had sex. Okay, before Joe and Tina had sex, Joe had sex with uh, Melissa, and Melissa had sex with three guys, and so on and so on. Now, all of those things have a legal entry and right on you, and all of those things open the door to the enemy. All And every time you have intercourse, you're giving away a piece of your soul. You have to call back a piece of the soul. Now, if you want to know about that part of sex, watch Cat Kerr. She'll explain more. I don't want to go into that because most of you know who Cat Kerr is and have followed her and have an understanding in that. Okay. Um, okay. When you have intercourse, the man is to plant his seed in the woman. Okay. Well, when you have 
sexual intercourse outside of marriage, the devil has twisted that and perverted that, that the two become one, and the seed is open, the seed is, is open for the enemy now. So he's taking something that God gave that is beautiful and he's twisting it and distorting it. Now remember, sexually transmitted disease is a, de demonic a demonic manifestation and a copy of them becoming one, a husband and wife. So Satan always takes something true, something right and something good and he twists it around and distorts it. Um, uh, the husband and the wife becoming one in sexual intercourse. Well, he takes that with a prostitutes and a, a guy having sex with a prostitute and so on. As a husband and wife become one, they share all things. The enemy has taken and twisted it to manifest sickness and disease and the transfer of demons. Okay. Now remember, every time you have sexual intercourse, you now have soul ties to that person that need to be broken off. You exchange stuff. So, those now, and remember, all those things have frequencies, and frequencies attract certain demons, angels, hosts, uh, whatever else is out there that God created that we don't have knowledge of because we don't have knowledge of everything. So, these are things that have to be taken to the courts of heaven. These are things that have to be broken off. These are things that will change your life. And remember, the everything that is done against the body, uh, outside of the body, let's see, what does that scripture actually say? Um... Okay, you sin against your own body because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Well, your body is the physical temple that was created. So, Jesus said, I go to prepare a pace for you. Jesus said, um, he's going to cleanse the temple. He's going to tear down the temple and rebuild it new. Well, he did tear down the temple. He tore down, he took all sin on his body and all sickness, disease, and the result of sin. And he took all that and he, and he, uh, cleanse the temple which is us that's why it's so important uh, to we are already righteous and holy because we are cleansed we are the temple of the Holy Spirit he has to come to live in a perfect temple and that's what we are because we're born again now when you walk in holiness and you walk that way you close all future doors of the enemy to have access to you you're already holy, just and right because you are a child of God. But walking in a holy life opens the door for you to hear God better and open and closes the door for the enemy to work in your life. So walking in holiness is important. And Jesus, remember that Jesus created the temple to be perfect and holy, better than the old temple. So you are already perfect and holy and just and so on. So just stay, just keep it that way and I hope this helped you here's time for my commercial my name is Robin Bremer uh, .net is my website I'm a best-selling author I'm a publishing coach if you have a Christian book that walks in the supernatural things of God that you want published I publish it for only three hundred and ninety nine dollars as a Kindle book a print book it I get the ISBN number I create a professional um, cover um, I format your book. I do everything except edit it. Have a friend do it, a Sunday school teacher. I am terrible at spelling. I'm terrible in that area. I don't care. I don't want to improve it. Uh, I pay somebody to do that. <laughs> uh, and you can pay somebody to do that. Or you can pay me to hire my people to do it. So anyway, so go to robinbremer.net if you want to publish a book that is especially my niches, walking in the supernatural things of God. And please share this with your friends if this is a blessing to you. Make sure you like it. Uh, comment on it and watch live videos. I'm going to get ready to do a live video in the next couple days about communion again in the body of Christ because God has given me revelation about that. So love you all. RobinBremer.net. Have a blessed day um, and just be encouraged that God loves you and has created you perfect, healthy, whole, prosperous. Walk in it. Talk to you later.